How would you like to make rolls but only have to knead them once? Then try my mom's recipe for yeast cakes. You only have to knead them once, then let them rise for one hour, then bake. Welcome to the Bear Pantry Show. If you're looking for authentic Belizean recipes, then you're in the right place. My name is Barbara and this is Cooking Made Simple. This recipe is going to give us about 20 rolls, so we're going to need 9 cups of all-purpose flour, 1 quarter cup of regular granulated sugar, and you would add a teaspoon of salt if the butter you're using is not salted, but my butter is salted, so I'm not going to do that. A third cup of butter and some yeast that I've already proofed, and let me show you how I did that. So well, let me start with my yeast first, and then I'll go heat up my milk. So that was 1 cup of warm water from the faucet and then two tablespoons of active dry yeast and a teaspoon of sugar. Give it a stir and then just set it aside for five to eight minutes. Now I'm gonna go heat up my evaporated milk in the microwave because the warm milk will help the bread rise more quickly. And I just heated it for like 30 seconds, not too much. We don't want to scald it. All right, people, Joe has convinced me to use the kneading bowl. <laughs> oh my goodness, this brings back memory of my Aunt Tylene. My mom's aunt, when she used to knead bread on a kneading bowl, I think this is going to be a disaster. <laughs> so let's put the sugar, and you would have put the salt here. Mix it all up. Why oh why did I listen to Joe and use this kneading bowl? I should have just used a regular bowl. This thing doesn't have any sides, it's so flat. So let me go ahead and add the butter. It's only a third cup of butter. Let me cut it in, and the butter is softened to room temperature. Work it all the way in here, then make a well, and I'm going to add my yeast mixture. <laughs> Joe's laughing at me, guys. You know what? I'm already too far in to turn back now, so. I'm just going to have to make it work. I think my dad's going to be happy that I'm using the kneading bowl he brought back for me. <laughs> What's going to happen when I add the rest of the wet ingredients? Two things. Why am I doing this? This is extra work. And why didn't I put on an apron? Now I'm too involved. Let me get the milk. Wow, these old people went through a lot. They could have just used a bowl <laughs> or a basin. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to keep adding my milk until a dough forms. Yeah, I don't know how my aunt Eileen used to do this, man. This is a lot of extra work to keep scooping all this stuff up into a, a big pile here in the middle. By the way, when you run out of the evaporated milk, the dough is still going to be dry. So you're going to start adding water, okay? Just regular water from the, um, the tap. And just keep working it until you feel the dough form. So Joe says they have deeper kneading bowls that have sides that come up. This one's almost flat. But I got it from daddy and he was thrilled to give it to me. So I had to use it at least once on the show, right? Never again. It's gonna go back on the fridge and just be a prop. <laughs> now here comes the fun part for me kneading. I really do love kneading. I think it takes me back to when I was little and I used to play around with Play-Doh. So now I've made a log and I'm going to cut right down the middle. And then I'm going to go this way and cut 20 equal size pieces. Well, as equal as I can go with eyeballing because I'm not going to weigh them on the scale. Let me separate them. And then we're going to form the dough balls. So make a dome like this. And then start closing in the bottom. Flour, flour your hand as you need to, all right? Roll it on the counter or in between your two hands and then just press on it. We want to kind of flatten it, but we don't have to use a rolling pin. Set this one aside, get the other one going, make a dome again, see? Then close it in, just pinching the bottom. Now this one I'm going to roll in my hand so you guys can see this angle. press it down, set it aside. If you feel like one of the rolls is a little bit too big, just go ahead and pinch some of the dough off, all right? So see, 20. Now put them on a greased baking sheet. And 
and then let them rise for one hour. I'm going to set it on top of the burner while I heat up the oven because that will help. One hour and the heat will help it rise quicker because we need to eat breakfast. One hour later, let's take a look at our rolls. These are just gorgeous. Now let's put them in two shelves and we'll set a timer. But we're going to know that these are done when they look goldeny brown on the top. So the top shelf is done. Look, Joe's already making breakfast. He is not wasting any time. He's waiting for these little rolls. We're going to switch the one from the second shelf to the top shelf to make it get brown. Fresh. So right when the bread done, everybody moved into the kitchen just now. I fogged up the lens, didn't I? <laughs> Put some butter. And let's taste. Look at my basket. All right, guys. See how beautiful the bread is. Soft has butter. Let's taste. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Me and my little dance. It's so good. The minute the bread done bake, everybody came in the kitchen. Bye guys. Thanks for watching the Bear Pantry Show. Don't forget to follow the page and check out my book at my Facebook store or at bearpantryshow.com. Bye now.